Hi, Else here, and in this video we'll be producing the balance sheet. The balance sheet summarizes the assets owned, the liabilities owed, and the equity invested by the owners. This statement shows the financial health of a business at a specific point in time. In order to understand the balance sheet, we first have to understand the elements that make up this statement. Assets, liabilities, and equity, also called shareholders' equity. Each element has characteristics that define them. When we record the activities of a business, we use these characteristics to determine if the transaction will affect that element or not. Let's look at each element on the balance sheet individually, starting with assets. Assets have three characteristics. Assets are owned, they provide future economic benefit, and they are due to past events. Let's go through each of these characteristics and expand on them. First, assets are owned. For example, my cell phone is an asset because I own it. Second, assets provide future economic benefit. That means that the assets will be used, either directly or indirectly, to help the business. The last characteristic of assets is that they are due to a past event. That means that there was an event in the past that transferred ownership of the asset to the business. So, to summarize, everything that a business owns is considered an asset, a resource obtained through a past event that will benefit the business in the future. On the balance sheet, assets are divided into two categories, current and long term. Why? Financial statements are all about communicating useful information to decision makers. By grouping assets based on their characteristics, in this case how fast they are used or converted into cash, stakeholders obtain a better understanding of the business's financial position and health. Let's define those two categories of assets. Current assets are any assets that will be converted into cash, sold, or consumed within one year. A few of the more common accounts found in this grouping are things like cash and prepaid expenses. Long-term assets are any assets that do not meet the definition of a current asset. These are resources that will be converted into cash, sold, or used over a period of more than one year. They're divided into four subcategories, long-term investments, property plant and equipment, intangible assets, and other assets. In order to better understand the accounts that go into current and long-term assets, I suggest you check out the Financial Statement Elements video, which lists, defines, and describes all the different accounts under each category. How do companies get their assets? They often use liabilities, the next element of financial reporting. They take on debt in order to increase their assets. Liabilities also have three characteristics that define them. Liabilities are owed. They will be settled in the future. And finally, liabilities are due to past events. Again, let's go through each of these characteristics individually. First, liabilities are owed, an obligation or debt. Important also is that they are owed to third parties, individuals or groups who are outside of the business. A personal example of a liability is the student loan you might owe as a debt to the bank. Second, liabilities will be settled in the future. How are they settled? Through the giving up of either cash, goods, or services. For instance, a student loan will be settled through the payment of cash in the future, but other obligations may be settled by providing a service or delivering a good. Third, liabilities are due to past events. To summarize, Everything that a company owes to a third party is considered a liability, an obligation due to a past event that the business will settle in the future. Like assets, liabilities are divided into current and long term, again to provide information to stakeholders so that they can make decisions. Current liabilities are obligations that will be settled in one year. Current liabilities include accounts such as accounts payable and unearned revenue. Long term liabilities are debts which are settled beyond one year. Long-term liabilities, unlike long-term assets, don't have any more subcategories. All of the long-term liabilities are simply listed together. The accounts included in long-term almost always have the word payable as part of the account name. Again, to learn more, check out the Financial Statement Elements video, which lists, defines, and describes all the different accounts under each category. We've already defined the element equity when you completed the Statement of Retained Earnings. As a reminder, equity is the financing by owners. Recall that it is made up of contributed capital and retained earnings. It answers the question, what part of the business is financed by the owners? Similar to liabilities, the amount of equity is owed to the owners by the business. Let's do a quick check your understanding. Remember to pause the video and answer before I answer for you. The right to receive money in the future from a customer is an asset called accounts receivable. 
It's an asset because it has future benefit for the business that will be converted into cash. The right to collect cash in the future is a legal right which is owned and it is recorded due to a past transaction. Now that we understand the elements that make up the balance sheet, we can look at an example of a balance sheet. Note that the statement is so large that I've divided it into sections so that you can see them better. However, the balance sheet written out on paper would show all these sections together, one right after the other. As always, the statement starts with the heading, which must include the business name and the title of the financial statement. One change from previous statements? The balance sheet is at a point in time, not for a period of time. Why? Because every time a business has another transaction, their financial position changes. For example, if you have $10 in your pocket and then you buy a Timmy's, your financial position has changed. That's why the balance sheet is a snapshot, one second of time. The title of the statement reflects that. Listed first on the balance sheet are the assets, with the heading assets. Then there is a subheading called current assets. There you'll see the details of the current assets section. Notice that the assets are listed in order of liquidity. The faster the business can convert the assets into cash, sell, or use them, the higher they are on the list. For example, accounts receivable is listed before inventory because the business is likely to collect the cash from their customers before they sell more inventory. Note that assets which will be converted into cash are always listed before assets which will be used or consumed. Inventory can be sold for cash, but prepaid insurance will be used up over time. So both the prepaid insurance and supplies are listed last. Is the order of the items that will be used up over time important? Actually, no. I could have listed supplies before prepaid insurance and the statement would still be correct. Next, there is a subtotal called total current assets. Next, we move on to long-term assets. Remember that the long-term assets are subdivided into four different groupings. The first is long-term investments. Note that each subcategory of long-term assets has its own heading and subtotal. First is long-term investments, here made up of two accounts, debt investments and equity investments. As noted, there is a heading and a subtotal, called total long-term investments. Next is property, plant and equipment. Here it is listed with the accumulated depreciation listed separately for each subgroup. Land does not have an associated accumulated depreciation because land, unless under very special circumstances, is not used up or consumed over time. Remember that accumulated depreciation is the total amount of the asset that has been used or consumed since the asset was purchased. Next, the total of all the intangibles are provided as one line item. Finally, other assets, which are every single long-term assets which does not fall into the other subcategories. For instance, accounts receivable that are outstanding for two years would be included here, or two years of prepaid rent would be included in this catch-all subcategory of long-term assets. At the bottom of the asset sections are total assets, which includes both the current and long-term assets together. Liabilities are next. Recall that liabilities are divided into current and long-term, with current listed first. This part of the balance sheet starts with the heading liabilities and then current liabilities. The current liabilities are listed in order of how fast they will be paid or settled. The faster they will be settled, the higher they appear on the listing. Notice that current liabilities includes an account called current portion of note payable. This amount is a total note payable, basically a loan, that will be paid within the upcoming year. It is part of current liabilities because it meets the definition of a current liability, due within one year. A total of all the current liabilities is then provided. Long-term liabilities have the same structure, a heading, a list of accounts which make up the subcategory, and then a total. Remember the current portion of the note payable? The long-term portion which is due beyond the one-year period is listed under long-term. The total note payable is the current portion plus the long-term portion together. The liability section closes with the total for all the liabilities, current and long-term. It should be noted that if a subsection of liabilities has only one account, there is no need for a subtotal. For example, if long-term liabilities only had one account called note payable, then there would be no long-term liabilities total needed. The amount of notes payable would simply be listed by itself with no subtotal, but still with a heading. Next is the shareholders equity section with the heading shareholders equity. Details of the split between contributed capital and retained earnings is provided. Note that the contributed capital is always listed first, followed by retained earnings. 
a subtotal of the shareholders' equity section is provided before a final total of all liabilities plus shareholders' equity. That completes the balance sheet. Notice something very important. Total assets are equal to total liabilities plus shareholders' equity. This is called the accounting equation. This equation shows the economic resources, our assets, are financed either through debt, our liabilities, or equity from owners. In the balance sheet, assets always equal liabilities plus shareholders' equity. Pause the video in order to answer the following check your understanding question. The balance sheet would not include which of the following accounts? The answer is not A. Office supplies are owned and have future benefit for the business, so they would be recorded as assets. The answer is not B, because unearned revenue represents the goods or services owed to customers and is therefore on the balance sheet as a liability. The answer is not C either, because capital contributions are the direct investment by owners which appear on the balance sheet as part of equity. The answer is not E, because prepaid insurance is owned and will provide benefit in the future, so it's recorded as an asset. The correct answer is D, because customer lists the business have developed themselves are not listed on the balance sheet because they are not due to a financial transaction with an outside party. As such, they would be valuable to the business, but they would never be listed on their balance sheet. So what questions does the balance sheet answer? For investors, it shows if the business can pay its current and long-term debts as they come due. For creditors, it indicates if there's enough assets to operate. If the business can't operate, is there enough assets to cover outstanding debts? Does the business have enough cash to pay its debts as they come due? Considering current debt levels, should we lend more money? For both investors and lenders, it answers the question, does the business use debt or equity financing? The balance sheet is not the last financial statement we're going to complete. The amount of cash from the balance sheet is used in conjunction with the income statement to create the statement of cash flows, which is the topic of our next video.